we are two of us again today and I'd like to start off by introducing the agenda. I will briefly show you what we'll be talking about, namely our discovery system that we call StabiCat. And if you want to look it up, you can find it under stabicat.de. And then Anata Kaufman is going to say a few words on what we have done in terms of user research and what questions we've had, what results we've received, and then I'll be telling you more about what we are planning to do in the future. I, no, is that right? Yeah, okay. The Stabi Cut, and I actually, I think it has been mentioned before during the conference. So we started out with a better version in January of 2023. And in the interest of agile development, we were actually planning to carry out user research. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that due to limited resources. But this year, we had a bigger user research project that we now want to present to you. And another aspect that might be important or relevant for you is that in addition to the discovery system, we also have our uh, old Pika catalog as the StabiCut Classic, which we continue to operate. Now, a brief look at our interface to let you know what we're, we want to be talking about this morning. We have one hit list that you can pull down the detail view within that hit list by clicking on that title. Apart from that, it's the usual information. You have search field to limit the search and then certain aspects that we have on the right side. So this is an overview and I'll hand over to Annette to tell you more. Well, uh, the first thing was that we needed to determine the questions uh, regarding the filtering, collected inquiries, findings from conversations, interviews, written inquiries via our contact form. So that was the pool from which we collected the questions that were most relevant. We prioritized those questions and then sorted out with the research, the use research office to sort out which questions can be answered. Basically, we had uh, three uh, different components that we focused on. One, the qualitative data was a participating observation. So we looked over 17 people's shoulders as they submitted three research inquiries, two set by them, one that they brought in. And we um, recorded the screen and then randomized and anonymized the information. Then we had the Matomo analysis. That was a quantitative research, including a large number of log file analyses of real user behavior. And then we had an online survey using a standardized questionnaire to determine the system usability scale. That meant that we this is a standardized questionnaire, included 10 identical questions, such as I found the system easy to use. And we had a, a rating system from one to five. Uh, so the range is from I fully agree to I do not agree at all. That's the range. And then there was the option to collect quantitative data because we have an extra field for open feedback, a free text field. The question referred to a few main categories. This included the in information on the content, detailed information will be provided later on. It was about facets, online access, and others, um, miscellaneous, so basically openness to additional questions. So this was about questions that we weren't even aware of, questions we didn't even know we should be asking, so things that we learned on the way. So um, these are the results. First on the search strategy, there is a, a dark blue information is from the participating observation. Uh, qualitative is the medium blue from the statistical analysis and the qualitative data, free text data is from the, um, from the online survey. 
and that is all provided here. So are these search fields used? A clear no was the answer to that in the uh, participating observation. And this is also supported by the analysis of the statistical data. Uh, only 5% use the author search field and the other search fields are used even less frequently, much less frequently as a matter of fact. Now, is extended search used? We thought, well, in the participation uh, in the participating observation, we felt that was quite okay, six out of 17, but that is in contradiction to the online data survey because the result is clearly negative at 0.6% of those uh, surveyed using those fields. And we have detailed information on that, which can be read up if necessary. So what are the search fields that are used at all? The search fields that search for a certain uh, known item. So for every result, we have some feedback on the individual results. You can read them. Interesting. Um, how can you move to extended search from here? That was one of the comments. And these comments are from the participating observation. Unless it says online survey, then it was written feedback from the participants in the survey. If you need more time to, to read this through, you can follow up on this on the basis of the files. The next question concerned the hit list. Are the sorting functions found and do they work the way we expect them to? Well, yes, sort of, was the result in the um, participating in the participating observation. Then 6.9% use chronological uh, uh, sorting, uh, usually from most recent to oldest. The other sorting functions that are offered are at best 0.8% or less in terms of their usage rate. Now, look at... The next one is, is the sequence of the hits comprehensible? Well, sort of was the response. And they were also critical answers in the online survey. And that's what it looks like with the overall assessment of the hit list. It was, well, okay. So it was, there is certainly still room for improvement there. Let me just give you some of the obstacles that were identified uh, without scrolling, you can only see the first two to four hits in the list. That was cited as a problem. And another aspect that was mentioned was that the relevance ranking is less than convincing. And one thing that was mentioned frequently in this respect, and, and that is something we heard yesterday uh, in the reviews. Uh, here are some original feedback comments I often receive doubles in the results list and don't know where the differences are. That that is not prop. It, there's probably some order to it, but I'm not aware of what it is. In Stabica Plus, it's not as comprehensive as before. The next uh, aspect was uh, facets. Are they aspects? Are they found? It was a clear yes and no, uh, which is also supported by the statistical information that approx approximately a little more than 11% do use them. And this is uh, something that, we see, that we've seen in the participating observation where there were lots of participants who felt that they were experienced users, or we said, well, they are well versed in this, and they tend to say, well, I've never used it, this. But they should be they should be they should use them in our questions and they've done that. So so basically at first they tend to ignore them, but once they do use them, it works quite well, at least in the majority of those that are opened and seen right away, because you also have to scroll and the ones that are more at the bottom are not found that easily. And that's the second aspect. Of the facets used, the majority, that is uh, 7%, is the uh, item type, the media type. Others are used less. And here are a few detailed data I won't dig into. And here again, some original comments. One's in English, the other one is when filtering on the right hand side, it would be nice to have to have the ability to select several categories at once and trigger filtering manually. So these are suggestions for improvement.
Now we're moving on to the online access. This was particularly important for us because uh, the State Library has an e-first strategy. So we in particular wanted to know, are the icons comprehensible and clear? Uh, and also uh, the um, script the the descriptive text behind the buttons they are called license free free of charge we were told they could not be interpreted properly and uh, therefore were not really comprehensible so this was supported too by the qualitative basic index entries and the most important thing is is access easy and satisfactory can i get to uh, what i searched and also successfully uh, found unfortunately uh, the survey said no unfortunately so there were many uh, critical uh, free text or basic index replies Mostly there is a multitude of online access points for one and the same publication. This is one problem. The next one is the uh, lack of precision of forwarding an individual hit in the uh, stubby cut to a general page, for example, of an electronic magazine. This is irritating time and again, namely the expectation when I click this button, I immediately get to the full text I got displayed. And that this mostly doesn't happen is uh, really a big catch. Now, what we see here is an example of uh, what it would, might look like in a not very nice way. And this is also described uh, explicitly here, like this is a little confusing. Yes, indeed it is. Another favorite of mine is the top one, the three buttons, uh, that's too, too much. On this slide, we can see a few th uh, things which are the bycatch, things we were not searching for. Top left, discovery is mainly used for known item searches. Thematic search takes place elsewhere. This is something we were told by participants. Uh, participant monitoring, and we can also see it in the log file data. Our discovery is mainly used for known item searches. And people clearly told us when we want to use uh, thematically, we go elsewhere, Google Scholar, JSTOR, specialized databases, etc. So there the question is, of course, what do we do with such a finding? This is, of course, very fundamental. What we also learned was the love uh, to our uh, old catalog is uh, still very high. Uh, a lot of people told us we do continue using is don't switch it off and the log file data say 11% continue to use the old classical uh, PICA catalog. So why the results? Uh, you know, they have much more confidence in the results, but also the results are shown in a much more well-organized way, 10 at once, not like in StabiCard where we have nice covers and everything looks pretty, but it's not perceived as so easily scrollable and uh, well-organized. Now, what do we do with these findings and um, how do we evaluate these? Our plan had been during the rest of the year that we have uh, two six weeks development uh, sprints. This is what we had agreed with the developers and there we will implement those things where we are quite clear already what measures for improvement can be successfully taken. But there are also things which go beyond and which we have to first evaluate some more, not least this question of do we want to continue to move uh, to um, thematic searches? Do we want to develop features supporting this um, and, and making users use this? So this, this? This is a fundamental question we have to sort out. To, before I wrap up, here are a few more measures we have thought up. We found that research strategies are hard, uh, search strategies are hardly used. 
pools, uh, Boolean operators are not used. All the things we as librarians use are not used, but one expects that this is um, built into the systems, is supported by the systems automatically. And this is also something we want to address. For example, a large uh, error tolerance uh, in keyed in with keyed in search terms. We already have a page saying like you could do so and so. We want to revise it. Also, the help feature is not used at all. The statistics showed that 0.6% or so uh, is the amount of people who actually went to the help um, button. We thought whether help pack packages might be fitted in in a context-sensitive way in the respective places. And then we had things like research tip of the week or so. This is an idea. Let's see what we implement out of that. With the search uh, bars, which are not really used, we think about streamlining them, reducing them, offering less, and maybe also renaming them. And then we ha we'll have to see whether this uh, adds value or whether, you know, it just uh, remains the same situation, namely that people don't use it. Then there's a whole bag of things which are UX design measures. For example, we are considering whether we want to create a possibility to switch over to a slimmer view where you can see more hits at one in one go and uh, whether it might be better to uh, scroll uh, through a, a list if the action buttons are on the right hand side and not below. And one test, test person said she uh, JSTOR, um, she said uh, the list is much uh, more well organized. So we took a look at that. So there are a few UX things we want to improve, and we will certainly address that in our development sprints. Then there's another issue which has been mentioned a few times, namely how do we improve the ranking and further evaluation and use of the uh, grouping module for deduplication. This is also on our agenda. Now, regarding the facets, we are wondering what is better? Do we all fold them out so that like in Amazon, you can see all elements at a glance and thereby can also assess and uh, judge what we can do, what the user can do, or is it better to fold them in so that you can see all the facets at one time? So these are actually two contrary uh, things. And maybe you have an idea of what the best choice is. We're not quite sure about that yet. So online access, the links clearly, they have to be reduced. Maybe we need courage, uh, to uh, have less rather than adding too much uh, context information. The users won't perceive that anyway. And uh, also uh, the writings uh, to be revised. With a few things I have mentioned, we think that we're not the only ones. Maybe you have been confronted with similar issues and have similar questions. And um, this is why we are now very interested in your uh, stance to these things. One thing that was mentioned a while ago as a question in respect of the previous presentation, should we, for example, bundle online and print hits or should they stay apart? So the users in our participant monitoring gave us contradictory tips. So we would like to engage in a dialogue with you. So we're open for questions, but also for your views and suggestions. Before we get there, we would like to express our thanks. Number one, to our staff office for user research. They are absent today, but they prepared this great uh, project with us and evaluated it. Also, thank you for your interest. And on the slides, you will also find our contact details so that you can contact us afterwards if you want. And we've got a few minutes left, in fact, and would therefore welcome your opinions.
Yeah, thank you for this very exciting presentation. Here's the first question. Yeah, it was super to listen to you because uh, there's a lot of congruence with the uh, findings we have had in our survey this year. I would be interested in the following. I would like uh, to engage in a dialogue with you and we may as well uh, develop some synergies because I think that uh, we can develop things together. So how did you win over the users for the participant monitoring? I was involved with that. We advertised online via our blog, via the website, via social media, and uh, the promotion there had little echo. Furthermore, we promoted through uh, postings on site, and uh, the greatest echo came from uh, DIN A5 flyers we displayed in baskets, so the users can grab them while walking past. So it was clear that one or two days after we had uh, placed them there, there was the peak of the responses. So we analyze it as follows. The people on site, you know, just have closer ties and are more likely to invest. And also we received a little thank you packages, which we sent away. So there was a little incentive. Ah, I see. Uh, unfortunately, we can't offer that. But thanks for that tip. I will give that, forward that to our PR department, uh, namely that print uh, products uh, can really be meaningful these days. Tilman Schiel, AI chatbots, uh, that is what my question concerns. Have you ever thought about different access opportunities like AI? For example, the uh, subject of an extended search in an AI, you do the extended search interactively. That is, uh, you can approach it by talking or by non-item search. You don't need to know exactly. You can ask and then narrow down to the problem. So this is a change of paradigms, maybe not a bad idea. Definitely, it's very exciting. This is nothing we could uh, implement within six weeks and within this year. So these uh, steps uh, indicated on the slides, these are mainly those uh, which were very obvious to us and which were also easily handleable so that we could address them immediately. But we will not stop there. But of course, we will continue with our development. And I also think that AI certainly will play a role in that. David Maus, State and University Library of Hamburg. Maybe you said it and uh, I didn't hear it. Did you, in fact, think about or uh, talk to people with handicaps? For example, visual um, handicaps like uh, accessibility being the buzzword here. No, we have not done that. However, we paid attention to that. Respectively, our very experienced uh, staff office of user research, this colleague, she uh, um, looked at this being representative. So the distribution of these 17 pers uh, uh, persons matches uh, these uh, user groups of the library. But this is indeed not a thing we did. Well, we haven't done it either, but it's on our to-do list, namely in a targeted way to uh, speak to users who have to use screen readers or magnifying glasses and to get feedback from them for how handy that is, what we have thought up in terms of accessibility. Yeah, that's definitely good. So this was the first step we have taken uh, since we went online. And we, of course, had a certain backlog at that time. So we knew at what points we want to ask um, where we ourselves were not sure whether the things we developed meet the needs. So this was the focus in the first place. But of course, this is not a one-time act. It should be repetitive. And then such a focus would certainly be very helpful. I've got a comment and a question on the percentages. First of all, my question, do they relate to the persons or to the search queries? I mean, if one person has uh, lodged uh, several queries, what does it relate to? And the comment is, my feeling is, 
this does not necessarily mean uh, when a search feature is used little that it is not useful. Uh, maybe it is useful in, in a few cases, but then very useful. It may be just a stand, an indicator that the standard search is working well. I would be cautious uh, removing features because they are used rarely. Yeah, I believe it's not about uh, taking features offline, but it's... Um, about features we also find useful to be made more usable and more prominent. These figures, these stem from our Matomo data and I think they relate to search queries. Yeah, there's a nod. Thank you. So it was just a narrow timeline, just one week, you know, what we evaluated. I do think, however, it is quite representative. There are a few more questions from the Zoom stream. In fact, it's not questions, it's rather comments. Still, it's quite interesting when I uh, bring them across. The first thing is a comment. It's very nice for the online participants if those who ask questions briefly tell where they come from and what system they're using. And now as to the comments, it was a bit about these facets. Damien Katz here points to a pull request he already filed on the multiple facet selection. I don't know what is behind that, in fact, but I just wanted to um, get it across. And there is an idea, I don't know what this what view it relates to, whether this is the mobile view or the desktop view. So a folding out and uh, showing it in only three lines. And there is another comment of Martin Fastnacht. He writes, I don't find it so surprising that users in library catalogs research only rarely thematically. Uh, comprehensive data that is specialized databases are just more comprehensive. However, I would find it a pity if libraries um, um, pull or withdraw from the development of um, factual things because um, databases like uh, one x theo Relbib, and Grimlock would profit from that. Okay, thank you, Felix. Ostrowski from the Berlin State Library speaking. Uh, shared questions uh, are um, easier to carry, um, you said, and uh, in a way we're all uh, having the same interest. We're using similar models. So is it not that we could uh, find an overriding shared approach? I mean, you said that you also use uh, the SAS standardized uh, questionnaire uh, so uh, it's very exciting to discuss the results on the one hand, but also on an overriding basis to collect data maybe. Now, the qualitative, uh, it's, it was the qualitative observation, like how many people did you say? 17. So for one institution, it's difficult to dig deeper. So um, I've, uh, it, it would be quite interesting uh, to see how one can standardize and collect data and maybe also derive findings from that. Maybe the facet usage in the system is much better. And we just found, uh, you know, they, they are on the left. So it's uh, difficult to, you know, to verify that across the systems. So it might be interesting to um, engage in conversation about that on an overriding basis. I would also have a very short question. A differentiation between the used terminals uh, was made by you. Yes, we also took a look at what usage looks like. And I haven't got it on mind. I think it's about 25% of the people who use it on a mobile basis and 75% still on the desktop, even though desktop, that can be different screen sizes. And uh, it's visible, you know, that not everything uh, is immediately visible. And our impression was that it is important that is what you see immediately without scrolling, that this is also perceived. I mean, with the facets, it was quite clear. In the table, if you want to look that up, these are the three ones 
with a blue background. Let's see whether I can find it. These are the ones which are either folded open and, and B are very much at the top and directly visible. And these were indeed used the most of the time. I mean, they were most used. This is online access, location and item type. When and location, this means uh, the reading room. We are a magazine library and the stocks which are in the reading room of one or the other library can be found through this location facet. So it's clear that it doesn't apply to many search queries and is used less. However, is this taken into account too? It's visible that it's exactly these facets which were used and all the others below, uh, you know, are uh, very uh, different. And also those which you use for a non-item search are used much more than things like classification um, or um, keywords. I mean, this is negligible, unfortunately.